Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the many, many Z790 boards I'm going to be reviewing over the next few days, and that is the Z790 Aorus Master from Gigabyte. Now the Master has always been kind of in the shadow, maybe, of the extreme, but normally packs most of the uh, goodies, but at a significant saving over the more expensive brother. Now this one, as with all of the motherboards for the Z790, feel very, very expensive. This one is coming in at $619.99. So Lord knows what the uh, extreme's going to end up costing. But I'm gonna give you a good look around the board, what little comes in the box, because they are very um, uh, lacking in the accessories department this generation. We'll give you a good stomp around the board, and then I'll talk to you about the uh, performance as well, because I've done a full set of tests. It may look different because it's not in the case at the moment, but it's because I've tested all of the boards before launch that I could do, so that there is a lot of data in the graphs for us to compare stuff to. Uh, and then I will also talk to you about my experience with overclocking, give you some tips and guides and explain to you why this one stands out differently against some of the others. So we can have a good old chit chat about it. But for now, we need to have a look around the board. So then peeps, when I say that they're lacking a bit in the box, I've already obviously got the motherboard out, but you get your sticker pack, you get your manual. This is a metal badge, which is kind of nice so that you can adorn it on your case should you want, or the back of your phone. Uh, one of the nice things that they did give you was a couple of SATA cables, but they're soft braided SATA cables, so that was a nice touch. You get your Wi-Fi dongle, which you're gonna need, and then the other things really are uh, a normal RGB extension, because it's four pin and not an addressable one. Uh, and then you get a couple of thermal probes that you can plug in on different parts of the board. And they're still including this weird uh, microphone, and that's so that you can tune your fan performance based on noise. Um, but it's still with that horrible red and black cable, and it, I don't know, it just it doesn't feel that great to me. Now, the big board itself, 20 plus one plus two power stages, uh, and they are a 105 amp per stage as well. And the motherboard is eight layers in total. Now, oh, hi, the camera. So Gigabyte started doing these beautiful heat sinks. And it's almost like it's nano black, because I'm really struggling to show you the heat sinks on the board at the moment, but they are old school heat sinks with a carbon nano coating so that you can see they are very fine and that means you've got a massive surface area down here. Now this is going to be the hottest section of the VRM but you have got a meaty aluminium heat sink on the top. I do wish they'd gone double thin array. Now as you can see that you've got the Aorus kind of hologram on this IO area at the top. Now, one of the things I do want to say is there are a lot of fan headers because you get two hidden up here. Now, I think the ones hidden at the top in reality are gold dust because these are the ones I would plug my rear exhaust fan into and maybe one of the roof fans. And because a lot of people end up plugging them in down here if they're here, and it just means that you're dragging the cable everywhere. But anyway, three more fan headers there. We have to come right down the side of the motherboard to find the other two. And these are vertical ones, sorry, horizontal ones. There's another two there. And then there's another one there. So in total, there are 10. Uh, but we will, two eight pins, solid pins, shielded as well. Come along, then you have those three fan headers I just showed you. Uh, normal RGB and an addressable RGB, PCI poster readout, power switch, then down to the 24 pin, again shielded, all solid pins as well, which is great. Underneath that, 
two USB 3.2s, then you've got a USB 3.2 Gen 2 there. There is only one of them. Um, this port here, effectively, I'm calling that the Asus ripoff button because Asus were doing it last generation and now Gigabyte are doing it this generation. It's just a constant copycat thing. Uh, you'll see more of that sort of stuff. It's been happening for years. They always end up doing it. Two SATAs. Again, like I said, two horizontal uh, PWM headers there for your fans. And then down in the bottom corner, your front panel header, two more fan headers, two internal USBs. There's a fan header there as well. Come along and you get your uh, normal RGB, you get your addressable RGB, and then your front panel audio. You can see there's a massive heatsink for the PCR Express 5 M.2 just beneath the CPU. I'll bring you a photo up of what underneath the actual heatsink looks like because I have taken this board apart and taken photos and everything for the website. And then on the front panel, or the back panel I should say, you can see we have clear CMOS button, QFash, then you have your Wi-Fi 6E. There's an awful lot of connectivity on the back of this board, which I was quite pleased about, because some of the boards, it did feel a bit lacking. You can see that we have a display port here for the onboard video, should you need to use it. Graphics card might die. 12 pin might have been bent, you know. <laughs> Sticking with the jokes. Now, there is a button down here. Here we go. So we've got the reset switch, and I'm sure there was another button around here somewhere. Maybe it is the reset switch. You can program it now so it can do other things. So direct to BIOS, reset. I'm just looking at the, there we go. Reset, RGB switch, direct to BIOS switch, and a safe mode. And you can set that switch in the BIOS. Now I love that sort of stuff, especially when it's a direct to BIOS switch, because I hate it when you press reset and then you can't get into the BIOS because you've not tapped quick enough or you've just missed it. And then you end up having to do a shutdown instead. Okie dokie, now, performance. I'm gonna ping the results up uh, around for you to have a look at. Don't forget you can pause it if you want to have a look at the graphs to digest them. I know some of you are gonna moan about having to tilt your head and stuff. We're still trying to work out a way that we can get loads of data in the graphs for you to put, pick about. Now there wasn't really anywhere that this completely ashamed itself, but at the same time, there wasn't anywhere that it was at the top of the graphs consistently either. So you can have a look through them, see how you feel. Now, one of the things I will say, when I was overclocking this, I did still manage to get it to match the clocks that I got with the other boards. So, uh, so far, it's only been the Elite AX that I couldn't quite get the clocks out of the i9 that I wanted to, because it was tested with the 13900K. So the master matched all of the other boards that we wanted, 5.6 gigahertz on the P cores, across all of the cores, and then, uh, 4.5 gigahertz across all of the E cores. Now, the, with the other boards, the uh, voltages have been floating around 1.3 volts, or sometimes a little bit less. But one of the things that I will say with the, uh, with the uh, master, you can tell that I've had to talk about too many boards in too short a period, because they're all coming out all at once. But with the master, it, they did, or it did need a little bit more volts to keep the overclock stable. So we were going in at uh, 1.32 volts rather than 1.3 or below. One of the things that did surprise me with this board is it was visibly and uh, throughout the use with the overclock, the temperatures were lower. Not sure why or how they've done it, but even though we needed more volts to keep everything in check, the actual CPU temperatures were lower consistently than any of the other boards. It did very very well in that regard and with a uh, processor that uh, has been notoriously very hot this one out of all of them did stand out to be the lowest temp one didn't mean that we could get any extra overclock out but it did mean that with lower temperatures it meant it or it could mean for you guys at home less noise and it it was just quite a simple thing to use 
the only thing that I did find in the BIOS, which was finding the load line calibration, which you have to go into the CPU settings and then into the VRM settings, and it's kind of buried where you have to get to to get to it. And then when you start using it, genuinely, there's like uh, normal, sorry, standard, normal, low, medium, high, turbo, extreme. Well, if you use anything below turbo, you'll get a lot of V-droop, an awful lot of V-droop. If you go above turbo, it will increase the voltage loads. So by my experience with the F4 BIOS that I used, put it on turbo, forget about it, because then if you're going for manual overclock, which is the way I do things, it meant that the voltage that you wanted was the voltage that you got, and it didn't go up and it didn't go down. It meant you were in control. Uh, all of the other ones, as far as I'm concerned, were pretty useless but that's not a new thing with gigabyte it's just their load line calibration has always been a little bit excessively complicated and most of them are just a waste of space so that's my uh, tips for you the extra volts didn't necessarily mean extra heat use turbo on the load line calibration and I'm sure that you will get the best out of your processor with this board no matter whether you get the uh, i5 i7 or the i9 uh, don't forget you can go and have a look at the other motherboard reviews that we've done on the website including the AX which I'll tell you right now the AX is a board for i5s or stock i7s and stock i9s it's not a big multi-core over threaded overclocking board but you can go and find that out yourself by going and have a look at the website and we've done other boards videos CPUs DDR4 versus DDR5 guide on the channel as well so please like, subscribe, content, and keep me busy in the evenings, and I will just keep churning out all of these reviews as quick as I can. They're not as in-depth as they normally would be, but that's because I've tested six, eight boards, including two processors and a DDR4 versus DDR5 thing, all for launch day, and I am currently losing my mind.